You guys. Wow. I know, I'm back. What? What the actual flip is popping to be nation? Woo, woo, woo. Told you guys I would be back very soon with a new video. Hee <laughs> hee. This video is gonna be about how I went to Arizona by myself and what that experience was like for me and why did I go to Arizona by myself? And I also wanted to say thank you guys so much for the positive feedback on my Coachella video. If you guys haven't watched that yet, go watch it. I just posted it a few days ago, so. But watch it after this, okay? Don't click out of this. Or just make a new tab. Don't click out of this one. But I loved reading the comments on that video. And then a lot of you guys were asking for my lip combo that I was wearing in the last video. I'm also wearing it right now, so I will tell you guys. This is Urban Decay, the lipstick that I'm wearing, and the color is Hideaway Matte. And then I just put a clear gloss over it. This is Too Faced Lip Injection. I usually just put this over it. This one's really expensive though, but just any clear gloss over this color is really nice. Doesn't really matter. So there you go. Go crazy. Before we get started, we do have a sponsor, so take it away, Sarah. Thank you so much, Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. As you guys know, I've been using Scentbird for a few years now. They never do me dirty. I'm so passionate about how I smell. Sometimes it borders the line of like being paranoid and I always have multiple perfumes for multiple occasions and multiple seasons and just different moods that I'm in. And this is why I love Scentbird. Okay, hear me out. Scentbird is a subscription service that allows you to try a new fragrance or more than just one each month for just $17. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply to try the new fragrances before committing to a full-size bottle. And on Scentbird, there's over 600 designer brands to choose from. There's like Prada, there's Gucci, Versace, and then there's also the little indie labels for you indie people out there that just wanna be different. Some of the indie labels are Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel, and I really like Confessions of a Rebel. That's a good one. They have perfumes, they have colognes, and they have a lot of unisex options and some of the fragrances that you can choose from are like hundred and fifty dollars or even like three hundred to five hundred even so I'm gonna show you some of the perfumes that Scentbird sent me okay so first of all look how gorgeous the little cases are twist it and then it just opens up like this so you can see the actual vial and this one is called sexual floor floor by Michael Germain and in the past I would always get sexual noise Neuer? It's different. Oh, and I love this one. Just like the name, it's making me excited. It just smells sexy, I don't know. It just smells like I'm out to dinner with like a really attractive person. We're making like very intense eye contact at the table. And you know why we're making intense eye contact? Is because he can smell this on me. I'm just exuding power and excellence and beauty. It's like a little florally. It's like light, but there's like hints of sandalwood, I think. I don't know, I love it. It's like a little woodsy too. I don't know but I like this one. And then here's the next one. And this is by Confessions of a Rebel. Remember that indie brand I was telling y'all about? And this one's called Get a Room. So you do the math. What could that potentially mean? Oh my God, yes. This one is just so beautiful too. This one's very like feminine, I feel. It's a lot more citrusy. Whenever I wear this one, I get so many compliments on it. I feel like with this one, you can just wear it out and about. And then last but not least, we have this one. This one is called Bahia by Brown Girl Jane. And this one is one of my favorites right now. Like I've never smelled anything like this before. It's such a unique smell and it smells like very woodsy. It smells like it's late at night and I'm sitting by this like beautiful tree, but it just smells like a cozy night. Really mature and grown up, but it's not too over the top. It's like a really beautiful earthy scent, if that makes sense. So yeah, I'm absolutely obsessed with these right now. I'm so happy that I tried different ones. Make sure you guys click the link below in my description box to visit Scentbird's website or app, or you can scan the QR code and use my code VASCA55 for 55% off of your first month at Scentbird. That's it's only about $8 for your first month. Everybody take advantage of that. Let's be smelling correctly this summer. Okay, it's almost hot girl summer. Let's get it together, people. Thank you so much, Scentbird, for sponsoring today's video. I smell like a goddess. 
and let's get into it. All right, now that we're smelling good and we're smelling sexy, why the hell did I go to Arizona? Great question. So I went to Coachella weekend two. By the end of weekend two of Coachella, I was so depleted, exhausted. My brain felt like a bowl of mashed potatoes. I couldn't think straight. And I was like, oh my God, I cannot wait to be home in my bed and just rest this week, put nutrients in my body and recharge, you know, at home. And then I got home from Coachella on Monday. So happy to be back. And then I get a notification on my phone um, from the United Airlines app. And it goes, hey, you're able to check into your flight for tomorrow. <laughs> flight for tomorrow. Y'all, I completely forgot that I booked a flight to Arizona months ago, months ago. I was like, oh my God, I have to go to Arizona tomorrow. And the reason why I booked this flight to Arizona was because Theo Vaughn, he's one of my favorite comedians. He was having a show in Arizona. That's it, that's why. I bought two tickets to the show months ago because Ashlyn, you guys know Ashlyn, doy. If you guys have been watching me forever, you know the bitch. She lives in Arizona. So I was like, I'm just gonna buy two tickets to the Arizona show and then take Ashlyn. And Ashlyn loves Theo Vaughn too. So I was like, this is gonna be great. I didn't even ask her. I just kind of assumed that she would wanna go with me. So I bought the tickets. And then like a week after I bought the tickets, she was like, oh, I'm actually gonna be in Oregon. So I was like, oh. So I was like, you know what? I'll just go by myself. That'll be fine. I had no time to recover from Coachella and the madness that that was. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'll go to Arizona on Tuesday. And also it'll be really nice to go alone so I can use that time to recharge, be by myself and enjoy this show. So I'm like, oh shit, okay, I guess I gotta pack, but I don't have to pack that much cause I'm going for one day. I wake up, I go to the airport. So my flight was for Tuesday morning, the day of the the show is Tuesday, so I was gonna go to the show on Tuesday, and then my flight home was on Wednesday. So I'm on the plane, listening to music, you know, doing my thing. Plane lands, I get in my Uber, and I got a hotel right next to the airport. Not in downtown Phoenix, right next to the airport. I check into my hotel, <laughs> I get my makeup out, I start doing my makeup, and I'm really excited for this show. I'm like listening to Theo Vaughn's podcast, I'm just so hyped, right? And I'm like, this is gonna be a great night. I go to my phone just to double check that I have the tickets. I go into my Gmail, type in Theo Vaughn tickets. It pops up. The show is tomorrow. It's not tonight. It's tomorrow. As I'm doing my makeup, I was like, what the f Why did I think the show was tonight? And I'm like, but my flight's tomorrow. <laughs> What is going on in this mashed potato brain? What am I thinking? I had to go in, I had to change my flight, and I'm like, what am I gonna do all day today? <laughs> this is so random that I'm just here. And at this point, it's like 6 p.m. And I had a half a face of makeup on, so I was like, whatever. So I just take my makeup off and I'm just chilling in this hotel room like, what do I do with myself right now? I literally got on my computer and I Googled things to do in Phoenix tonight. I don't know. And of course, since it was a Tuesday, there was nothing happening. So I was like, do I go to the movies? Ugh. I haven't seen a movie in a proper movie theater in probably a year. So I was like, hell, I'm scrolling through the movies. All of them are so lame and stupid or they're like action movies. And I'm just like, I don't wanna see an ah. You know, nothing looked good to me until I got to the very last slide and I see Joaquin Phoenix. Ooh, that man. If you guys don't know Joaquin Phoenix, he was in The Joker. He's in a bunch of really great movies. Joker is one of my favorite movies of all time. Brilliant, excellent, oh my God. But I saw Joaquin Phoenix on this little thing on my screen and I'm like, he's in a new movie? What the hell? And I click on it. There's a new Ari Aster movie that I didn't even hear about. I'm living under a rock. And if you don't know Ari Aster, he's the guy that made Hereditary, which is one of the best movies ever, and Midsummer, which is one of the best movies ever. And those are his only two films. 
So this movie is his third film ever. So you know it's gonna be good. And it's called Bo is Afraid. And I was like, that's an intriguing title. And it's by Ari Aster and Joaquin Phoenix is in it. Let's do it. And the only time available was at nine. I bought one ticket. I looked at the duration. Three hours long, you guys. And I'm not even exaggerating. You can look it up. I think it's two hours and 59 minutes exactly. What? That is the longest movie, but that's gonna kill so much time for me. And if you watch Ari Aster's films, it's gonna be good. So I'm getting in my Uber and we're driving to the movie theater. No makeup, I'm in my pajamas. And this man has the audacity to ask me. I see that you're going to the movie theater. Are you going on a hot date? <laughs> he was like trying to be cheeky. And I was like, sir, does it look like I'm going on a date? Like be so for real. Turn around and look at me right now. I had my hood on, sweats, sandals, <laughs> not even slides. I was in flip flops. Flip flops that said Las Vegas on them. They are literally the ugliest sandals ever. I know he was just trying to start conversation with me. I was like, no, I'm not going on a date. He was like, oh, <laughs> you're meeting, you're meeting up, up with friends? friends? No, dude, I'm not. I'm going to the movies alone on a Tuesday night. And he was like, Oh my God, I love doing that. Like, don't feel weird or like, don't feel like a- He didn't say don't feel like a loser, but he said something like- Don't be embarrassed. I'm like, I wasn't embarrassed until you just told me not to be embarrassed. Should I feel embarrassed, sir? Like what? And then he started going on a tangent about his wife and kids and how whenever he needs to get out of the house, he just goes to the movies alone. Opened up to me about how hard it is at home <laughs> with a newborn. And I'm like, damn, Jason, like really sorry. Like, okay. Just projecting all of his shit onto me. I didn't even say a word. I was just in the back seat like, oh. Mm. I have no energy to engage in this weird conversation about you being miserable at home with your wife and newborn kid. Like, I don't. And then I go to the theater, sit in my seat, and there was a lot of people. But I was like, damn, for a Tuesday? Let's get it. I'm sitting there with an open mind. I don't even know what the movie's about. I didn't even watch the trailer. I have no idea. I just Googled, is Bo is afraid scary? Some of the reviews, people were like, it's not like a jump scare type of movie. It's like a psychological scary movie. And I'm like, perfect, period. That's all I needed to see. I don't want to know what it's about. I just don't want to be sitting there alone, petrified and covering my eyes with no one to hold me, <laughs> you know? So I'm sitting there and I'm watching this movie y'all i genuinely feel like i'm on acid uh it was one of the craziest most bizarre movies i have ever seen in my life i had no idea how to make sense of it nope this movie was just what the fuck every 15 minutes what the fuck what the fuck what the fuck how does that correlate doesn't make sense i could not figure out where this movie was going but i loved it because i wasn't bored for one second and it got to the point halfway through the movie it was still not truly making sense but it was still so interesting the people in front of me just stood up and left they left i was like oh maybe they're getting popcorn they didn't come back and then it got to the last 30 minutes of the movie and i'm like okay I have to get an explanation or I'm going to freak out. You guys, the ending of the movie blew my mind. The most mind blowing ending about family dynamics. Those last 30 minutes, I was looking around at the theater and everyone was just like this. And I could tell everybody was like sitting there rethinking their childhood and their dynamics with their parents and how their behavior is and how they were treated as a kid shaped their behaviors. Now everybody was thinking, and I'm not even joking and I'm not being dramatic. Once the credits came onto the screen, nobody moved a damn muscle. And also when the credits rolled, there was no music in the background and they did that on purpose. They did that on purpose because they knew everybody was gonna be sitting there like, what the fuck? And 
and I was sitting there and I was wondering who was gonna be the first group to get up and leave because nobody was leaving their seat. Even the people in groups, people that were on dates, we were all just exiting the theater in silence. And then I got back to my hotel room and I'm on YouTube, I'm watching interviews of Ari Aster, I wanna know why he made that. I watched so many YouTube movie review channels, everybody was saying the same thing. Like you either get it or you don't. And if you don't get it, you're gonna hate it. But if you do get it and you're really into shit like that, then you'll love it. So anyway, I saw a movie. Jesus. <laughs> it's not that deep, Sarah. It was deep. So then after three hours of researching this movie, I finally go to bed at like four in the morning and I wake up to the sound of the hotel phone ringing. And I'm like, ugh. And I didn't answer it because I was so tired, but then they just kept ringing and ringing and ringing. So I was like, fuck. I answer it. Hello? Hi, Um, your checkout was an hour ago. I forgot that I was checking out today or I was supposed to check out today because I thought the show was last night. So I go, OMG, man. So sorry. Is there any way I can extend my trip? She goes, nope, we're fully booked. Why? For what? You know what I mean? Like what? But okay, sure. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll like come down in a second. Let me just get my shit together. So I grabbed all my shit and then I go down into the lobby and I find a hotel that's right across the street from the venue. Perfect. So I get into my Uber, you guys, and I had the most life-changing <laughs> Uber ride. My Uber driver, was so wise. It was like a 15 minute ride and he was just giving the most like spiritual advice about confidence, about everything. If you're being who you want to be, you know, you are built exactly the way you're meant to be to get everything you ever desire. Yep. It's important to realize every thought, like it's so hard to believe everything you want and desire in your mind is purely meant for you. It's not only a part of you, but it is meant for you. You wouldn't even think that unless you could have it. Yeah. I think the problem is that everybody thinks everybody wants the same thing. Everybody thinks everybody's attracted to the same thing. That's where I think the problem is. And I'm amazed, you know, there could be someone completely beautiful, but you're just not attracted to them just because some weird vibe, it just, I don't yeah, know. it's the energy that they put off. I don't know. I try not to overthink that stuff. He was so delightful. I, I was even thinking, like, do you want to go to this show with me? But I didn't ask, that would just be too much. So I get to this new hotel and when I tell you it's right across the street, y'all, it is literally <laughs> right across the street. And I go up to my room and I walk into my room and there's a crib for a baby in my room, just right there when you open the door. And I was so confused. And then one of the house cleaning ladies walked by and I was like, hey, um, there's a crib in my room. And I don't remember having a baby. I don't think I have a baby. Then she was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I know, what? Do I have a kid that I don't know about? She removes the crib and I had so much time to kill and I was hungry. So I was like, I'm gonna go downstairs, get some food, maybe a cappuccino. I'm just sitting there vibing, dude. My lunch was delightful. When I was done eating, I'm like, okay, time to go back up to my room. <laughs> I'm also still in sweats and you know, my hair's up. It looks like I just woke up, right? I start walking to the elevator. Push the elevator button. <laughs> waiting, waiting, smiling. The elevator doors open. It's Theo Vaughn. Say that the skin on your nuts, damn, come on. It's a nice material. If I had a couple of damn, uh, some damn ball skin loafers or something to put my feet in while I watch television. And I tried to contain myself so he didn't, you know? And he walks out of the elevator with this woman. I think it was his mom. And they walk past me and he was on a mission and I was too stunned to say anything. I was too stunned to speak because that was just not, I was not expecting Theo Vaughn to walk out of that elevator at that time too. So I was like, what the? 
But it was just so trippy seeing him in person because I obviously watch his podcast and his stand-up specials and shit. I've never seen him live. So they walk out of the elevator and I turn around and I'm just watching him walk out of the hotel. The timing of that was crazy. If I would have stayed in the little restaurant in the lobby for just two minutes longer, that wouldn't have happened. Us just crossing paths, it was so weird. I was like, huh. But once I got into the elevator and the elevator doors closed, I was like, what? What? That was so random. I didn't even know he was staying at that hotel, but it makes sense because it's right across the street. And obviously I didn't want to stop him or say anything or be like, oh, can I have a picture? I just, uh, you know, he's on a mission. He's got to go to sound check, you know? So I was just like, okay, cool. Cool, that was, that was really, that was really dope, actually. Theo Vaughn just walked right past me in the lobby. That was crazy. It makes so much sense that he's staying here. That's the theater. That was iconic. I'm like shaking. And also it was so fast. Like I didn't have time to even process. Oh my God. Like, can I come to your hotel room and party with you after? Can you imagine? Oh, that rocked. That made my day. That doesn't just happen. What is that supposed to mean? Anyway. That was cool. So then I go back up to the room. I start getting ready for the show. The show started at eight and I was looking out the window because I can see the theater right from my window. People were starting to line up and go in and I kind of wanted to be the last one there. <laughs> okay, y'all, I'm ready. This is my fit. Just casual sweatpants, heated boots. I'm kind of nervous. So I'm just gonna go downstairs in the lobby and get a few drinks. I love this like top that I'm wearing, it's like a sweater. Also, I was gonna go in my sunglasses because <laughs> I don't really want to be perceived. And my sunglasses are prescription so I can see really well in them. But then I put them on and I just look like such a douche. I feel like I'd be more perceived like this, you know? <laughs> I look so pretentious. I just like can't do it. So I'm just gonna go with these. And also I've been looking out my window because I'm trying to figure out the vibe. Like people are going in but it's 7.40, so I doubt the actual show starts at eight. Oh, maybe he has an opener though? I don't know what to do. I went back down to the lobby and I went to the bar and I just had a few brewskis by myself, you know, just pre-gaming. I was talking to the bartender for a minute. So I go across the street. I get to my seat, you guys, and I didn't realize how close my seats were to the stage. It was like uncomfortably close. I bought these tickets months ago. I was row five, y'all. And it's like a pretty big theater. And I was just waddling to my seat. Row five, right in the middle. I'm so happy. Then Theo came on stage and I was hollering, bitch. I was giggling my ass off. Had the best time, dude. It's really hard for me to laugh out loud at people. It takes a very specific type of humor and person to get me to actually giggle out loud uncontrollably. I could not stop giggling. And at one point, my stomach was hurting because I could not stop laughing, bro. I had such a great time. But then when the show was over, I was like, ah, oh, shit, man. I was on such a high because I was having so much fun. I was like, what am I going to do now? Go back to my hotel room and just sit there? What the hell? Like this sucks. What am I supposed to do? So I leave the theater. I'm crossing the street. And I walk up to the elevator. I click the up button. Elevator door opens and Theo Vaughn is not in there this time. So I'm like, damn, it's just really me, myself and I. I get into the elevator and I hear these people come around the corner. So I hold the door open so that they can come inside, you know come on in and it's this group of young 20 somethings three girls three boys we're all in this elevator together and i'm just in the corner kind of to myself feeling awkward in this elevator with these six strangers this girl looks at me and she goes you kind of look like sarah baska and i <laughs> and i chuckle <laughs> i am sarah baska and the way that the three girls were like, wait, no. And I was like, yes.
They started tripping in the elevator and they're like, what the fuck? Why are you in Phoenix? I was like, great question. I just want to see Theo Vaughn. And then they were like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing after this? And I was like, I was just planning on going into my hotel room and just sitting in my bed awkwardly. I have, n I don't know what to do. Are you guys going out? And they were like, yes, we're going out. Like, do you want to come out with us? And I was like, yeah. I do, I do wanna go out with you guys. Don't know any of you, but yes. <laughs> I should get out of my comfort zone and go with you guys. I should do that. And I felt comfortable because these three girls watch my videos, they know me. I'm not like, oh my God, these are strangers. Like I felt like I already knew them because that's how I feel when I meet all of you guys, you know? So I was like, yeah. The three boyfriends were with them too. So they were all in relationships and the three boyfriends were like, sure, this random chick can come. <laughs> and I was like, they didn't know who I was. So I was like, okay, let me just go into my room really quick and change and then I'll meet you guys down in the lobby. And then I get to my floor and then they're like, oh my God, we're on the same floor. And I was like, wait, what? Perfect. And then we all get out on the same floor and I'm walking to my room and I'm like, what the fuck? fuck am I doing? You guys, this is completely out of my comfort zone. And you probably watch me and you're like, oh no, this is so something Sarah would do. Like she would so do this. No, not really. I don't do, I don't do this. But something in my spirit was like, just do it girly. You know you want to. And these girlies seem cool and nice. And you can make some new friends. And I was like, yeah. I'm in Phoenix for one night, like, let's do it. I'm in my hotel room, I'm getting changed. And then the girl texted me and she goes, hey, we're in the lobby, just come down whenever you're ready. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll come down right now. So I go down to the lobby and it's just her and her boyfriend. I can't remember if they're married. Boyfriend, I'm just gonna say boyfriend. If you're married, I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna say boyfriend. Yeah. And it's just them and I'm like where's everyone else and she goes oh they're outside of the theater across the street meeting Theo yeah, yeah, we'll go yeah, outside right yeah, now we're yeah. gonna meet him we're gonna take a picture and I'm like oh okay okay wanna... is that what we're doing and she's like yeah, yeah yeah let's just go over there and I was like okay since I am in the internet space, I wouldn't say I'm in the comedy space because obviously there's actual comedians who do stand up, but everybody just kind of already knows each other if you're, you're on the internet, you know? I remember this one time I went to Young Gravy's show and me and Theo were in the same section, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that at the time until I went to his story and saw that Theo was in the same section as me for Young Gravy. like actually two rows behind me in the same section. He was right behind me, I had no idea. Mind you, this is after I got home from the concert. So I just went on Theo's story and I was like, wait, what? And I was like, oh my God, what? And then I clicked on my story from the Young Gravy show and I swiped up to see who watched it and Theo watched all of my stories, but didn't follow me. So I was like, did he like ask someone who I was? Cause I was right in front of him and I was popping my ass during Young Gravy. I was getting the fuck down. So he was probably like, who the fuck is this? Cause we were in the VIP section. So it was only like a few people. So I feel like, I don't know if Theo knows who I am, but I know that he watched my stories before. He didn't follow me though, which is like fine, whatever. I don't give a fuck about that. But I just didn't want to come off as like, oh my God. You know, cause I feel like I'm gonna run into him again, like a party or an event or something. It's the way that those words are coming out of my mouth as I'm sitting there in front of a ring light filming a YouTube video talking about him. Yet I'm saying this, be so for real. So we go across the street and there's Theo Vaughn outside of the theater taking pictures with that group of people in the elevator that I was with. I was just in the background though, watching with admiration, like, oh, this is so cute. I'm so happy for them. But I could tell he was like kind of frazzled and you know, he just finished an hour and a half show of him standing on stage telling jokes to like a huge crowd of people. Like he's probably exhausted, but he was really nice to everybody. And I'm in his merch, by the way. When we were in the elevator, I was like, I'm gonna get changed. I might put my Theo merch on. And they were like, oh my God, should we all wear Theo's merch out to the bars? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So I was in his merch, just standing in the background watching all these girlies take pictures of them. And then one of the girlies goes, 
Sarah, come go take a picture with like, do you want to? And I was like, I literally was just like, no, it's not. You, I'm chilling right here. Do I regret not having a picture with him? A little bit. Was that a great opportunity to have a picture with him? 100%. I was also very nervous, you guys. Like, I I don't know why. I was just so nervous. I wasn't expecting him to be outside taking pictures with this group, so I, I, I just didn't have any thoughts or couldn't really formulate a sentence. Um, and then you guys, it was so, I was like, oh my God. When Theo was saying bye to all of us, he starts walking away and one of the girlies, her name is Taylor, shout out Taylor. Taylor says so loud as Theo's walking away. Wait, oh my God, I like really ship you and Theo. While he's right there. Theo like looked over and I was like, and everyone was like, oh my god, wait, yeah, I do it for you. And I was like, this is, no, stop, please. Like, you guys, relax. Um, it was cute and funny, but also you guys, please don't make this a thing. Like, that's so uncomfortable for me. Like, please don't like comment shit on his stuff. Like, just don't, please. It would make me feel really uncomfortable if people start doing that. I don't want that to happen. I'm just telling you guys like where to sleep over, okay? Don't make it weird for me. It was cute when Taylor and like the girlies did it in Phoenix because it was just like, oh, <laughs> stop. But if you guys do that on social media, I'll be pissed. I'm telling you in confidence. And we go out to the bars, you guys. I had the best time. This group of people, they were so genuine, so fun. They gave me such a great time. They brought the best energy. Since they already knew me from my videos, I felt like I could be myself. <laughs> Why is that 
Thanks for everything. And you guys, they didn't make me pay once. Every single time I would get out my card to pay for a drink, they would... I felt like a princess. I was like, you guys are so freaking nice. Are you joking? I fucking love them. And if you guys are watching, thank you for giving me a great experience. We were at that bar until it closed. And then we were all sad because we're like, damn. So then we all go back to the hotel and we stayed in Taylor's hotel room till like 4.30 in the morning, just talking. And also the boyfriends were really in tune and cared. Like they gave a fuck. It was so sweet, y'all. I, I genuinely had the best time. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I went home the next day. I was pretty hungover, very hungover on the plane, but had the best time in Phoenix. Shout out to Taylor and all the girlies. If I didn't hold that elevator for y'all, my night would have been so boring. So I love y'all. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you guys very soon. Bye.